today we're going to be talking about a Venus flytrap. It's a carnivorous plant from South Carolina. And um, though I'm not too hard to take care of these plants, uh, all you need to do is keep it in direct sunlight. They love a lot of sunlight. Also, uh, don't water it too much because the roots are simply going to rot. And um, another important aspect about these plants is that they're used to process only insect protein, so uh, don't use soil that contains a lot of nutrients. Actually, don't use soil that contains nutrients at all, like you do with other plants, because uh, your roots are simply not used to absorb minerals and they're just going to get damaged. Also, don't water them with uh, normal water, tap water, bottled water. Only uh, use distilled water from the pharmacy or gas stations or reverse osmosis water. It's really important that you don't use any other kind of water because they're simply just going to die off. Your roots are not know, adapted to absorb um, minerals. For soil, you can use sphagnum moss or beet moss. Um, I use this kind of stuff right here. Uh, I got it from the pet shop. It's usually uh, used for reptiles. This thing right here. And about the genetics of this plant, um, genes are uh, not new genes. Or actually, all other plants have those genes. I mean, the ones responsible for processing insect protein. But um, these genes are somehow in Venus flytrap. These genes are activated when um, plants are getting damaged by insects or fungus or uh, non-carnivorous plants. In Venus flytrap, when the traps are stimulated by the insects, um, transcripts for the production of kidneys, which is an insect digesting enzyme, um, become amplified. Inside, they have two um, hairs on the top and one hair at the bottom. And it has a sort of mechanism that when uh, the insect gets inside and touches the top hair twice or the bottom hair one time, that's the only moment when the uh, trap's gonna, it's gonna close. You know, because, and it develops this mechanism because the plant doesn't want to you know, close every single time a raindrop falls on it. Also, it's important that you don't stress these traps too often. If you try to trick it, they're just gonna waste a lot of energy. They can only catch three insects, and if you try to, to uh, close it, trick the plant, and close it, you can only do it seven times. Insects get caught in, and they uh, get in contact with those hairs. Um, they um, act like uh, tripwire, sending electrical impulses that stimulate glands in the plant and cause them to produce a substance known as gismonic acid. Don't feed it any other kind of protein, don't try to give it chicken or cheese or anything else. They're only used to process insect protein. You can give it any type of insect, flies, mosquitoes, whatever you find. And uh, you don't need to feed it that often, only once a month. You don't need to feed all, all the traps here. Also another important aspect about these plants is that they need to get in a dormant state in winter. In their natural environment, they get through a dormant phase uh, in something like October, November. So if you keep it inside in your room, um, and it's not going to get into its dormant state, the plant's eventually going to get tired and it's just going to waste a lot of energy and it's going to die. So it's really important that you make sure that you keep these plants not outside because they might freeze, but somewhere where there's something like 4 degrees Celsius during winter so that they can get their dormant state. And uh, you don't need to water them in your dormant state and you also don't need to feed them. Um, now I'm going to show you how to feed the Venus light trap. That's all for today guys. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. I shall see you next time.